Yo, what's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? It's the Architect Beats Music Business Podcast. We are your host, Platinum Producers, Architect Beats. I am Juggernaut. I am Mike Trauma D. And we collectively are Architect Beats. If you have not, um, if it's your first time to the channel, you know, welcome to the channel. We always ask you to to make sure that you're subscribing. Um, Share with a friend. Uh, For those who don't know us, uh, we are Platinum Producers, Architect Beats. We have basically worked with all of the major artists um, in the music business, um, some of your, your most iconic artists and some of your current current artists. And, you know, the, the whole thing about the podcast is for us to just give a lot of information and game to upcoming artists and producers and musicians. And, you know, every week we tackle a bunch of topics that we get, you know, off the Internet through our Twitter or, you know, our Facebook or through our Facebook group. And we just, you know, try to give people some game, right? To help save some time and to help us to move your careers forward in the music business. So a lot of a lot of stuff going on this week. You know, a lot of stuff going on for ourselves this week. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of different things going on this week, you know. So uh, one of the things that we wanted to tackle for this week, man, and, and it's, it's so funny because, you know, we, we had a situation, but, you know, we're going to get into it. We're going to get into it, but... We want to tell those producers out there. We want to tell you producers out there, like, listen, make sure you know your value and make sure that you're not afraid or you're not scared to, to walk away from a deal. Yes, sir. And, yep. and, and, and we, we, we're going to get into some of the finer deal points and what makes sense. But, you know, we're going to get into a few a few reasons why yo, you shouldn't really be afraid to walk away from certain deals, man. And, 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 and you know, what's important, it's so important for you to make sure that you maintain your value and get what you really want. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're going to get into it and um, we're not going to, you know, release these, <laughs> the names. All, all, the, all the details. You know, because these documents and emails have a little uh, disclosure at the bottom. Uh, legally binding that you can't uh, release certain information, but we're going to get into certain things. Um, so um, a lot of times, of course, um, a lot of these lessons, a lot of these tips, a lot of these things that we give you is based on our real life experience. We're not just pulling them out of the air. We're not just, um, you know, just talking recklessly like some others do. We are actually giving you our experience you know, so um, one of the main things right now that that is a, is a, is a topic that we decided to um, bring to you guys is uh, knowing your value. And, um, you know, you may be you may get uh, a contract or a deal or whatever type of agreement. And it may not after going through it with your lawyer, you may go through it and, you know, you go through it with your attorney and, you know, it, it, it may not look right. You know, there may be certain things to the deal that to you is just non-negotiable. There may be certain things that you just won't stand for, you know, and you have to be okay with standing up for yourself and saying, I, I, I demand this, I demand that because I am this or I, I know my value, I'm this, I'm that, and I should get this, and I believe this is fair. And you relay that information to your attorney, okay, because remember, your attorney works for you. So you relay that information to your attorney and you let them know exactly what you want. Um, and if, if, if on the other side, they're not willing to give it to you, they're not willing to budge, then you need to be okay to say, you know what, then I'm good on this. Then I'm going to pass on this and, you know, I'll catch you up the road when, when things, things are better. You have to be okay with walking away uh, from a situation if it's not going to benefit you in the way you would like it to benefit you. If it's not benefiting you, and, and you, you, you got the pros and the cons, and it's not uh, working for you, then, then then walk away from it. You don't have to just because throwing, someone throws a contract in front of you that you have to feel obligated to sign it. You know, you can't, have to, you can't be thirsty. You have to just look at the agreement, look at your situation, look at your value. You got to look at all the things and really take a good, hard look um, and then make a decision. I think I think the the, the main um, point that you made is the pros and cons. You got to go through the pros and cons, and I think I think for us personally, when we 
we get these deals, we, we, we go through our pros and our cons. We go, okay, how is this going to benefit us, right? And then I think we talked about it in a previous episode. What do we really want this deal to give us? Or what do we want from this deal? Like, or what's this deal going to do for us in the short term? What is this deal going to do for us in the long term? And then we, you and I tend to hash it all out. And we go to say, okay, this, this person might be bubbling. This person got X amount of things behind them. Um, it's going to move in this direction. It may move in that direction, or it might not help us move at all. Right. It might just, it might not help us. It might not help us move the needle. Um, you know, that, that money that they give and we don't really need that. Right. Or that's not, that's not enough for us to really, uh, get a good steak dinner in New York city. Right. <laughs> so it's like, it's like, you know, I'm sorry, you don't eat, my mic don't need any meat. So, so, we to go to a good spot where you can get some good dinner. Let's put it that way, right? But but at, at, at the end of the day, it's like, yo, I, I'm looking at, we, we have to make sure that the deals make sense. And for artists out there, and uh, more so for producers out there, pardon me, um, you know, you have to understand that you're, it's for, for, for a lot of producers, you're battling, you're battling the connotation of the internet producer. Right. And and remember what's happening is that the advent of the Internet producer, the people who sell beats and packages of five for twenty five dollars and, you know, they're, they're leasing beats, they're doing this, they're doing that. Right. What that has done in, 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 in the in the the larger scheme of things is that it has reduced the value. Right. For you to for it's, it's reduced your value for folks that can afford to pay. Right. Like those leasing things and some of those other things, those things are for people who don't have budgets, who don't, who aren't budgeted, who aren't part of a, 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 who aren't part of major machines or aren't part of, you know, situations like that. So we understand that there's a, there's that, that ecosystem of, of people who need that kind of, um, who need those prices in order for them to further their careers. But then, you know, what we're talking about is we're talking about the folks who can really afford to pay. But just because of the of the of the atmosphere that we're in right now, just kind of decide to kind of throw things the way that they want to throw them, and it's very important for you to kind of make sure that you have a real good gauge of your value. Not let's not be delusional about your value. Also, let's let's be clear on that. Like you, let's make sure you got some skin in the game. If you got some skin in the game, then yeah, you can you can negotiate. If you, if you haven't had any skin in the game, or or you're trying to get some skin in the game. You know, you may have to make some concessions, but that goes back to what you're saying and saying the pros, the cons, right? What, how does this deal benefit me? How does this deal uh, move my career forward? Does this, does this deal open me up to other artists? Does this, you know, will it be able to, will I be able to leverage it into a secondary situation or or a third situation? You know, so that's, that's, that's a lot of the questions that you have to ask. And if it doesn't fit that criterion, then like you said, we can't be afraid to walk away from that shit. Yeah, you can't because, you know, you've got the deal before and, you know, you're skilled enough to get another deal in the future, you know. So um, have faith and confidence in yourself um, and your talent and your skills. Additionally, also, when you're making these decisions, don't be haste. You know, I have a, I have a habit of when these paperwork come across and I don't like it, I get enraged out the gate. I'm there cussing, flipping, throwing, throwing <laughs> stuff, and um, you know, I'm grateful I have a I have a I have a part in the in the game that we could just like really sit down and bounce some ideas off each other. Um, a, a, another tip in this is also is you know just uh, take a day or two to 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 let the emotion out of the situation because you never want to make a decision based on emotion. You always want to get that out first. And then, all right, let me sit down. Let's let's really look at it from a clear point of view of where uh, things things are, because you know you could get very easily offended in this game, and it's really nothing personal. It's just it's just business, and because our craft is involved in this, our talent is involved. We're so personally attached to this. It's very easily for people to be offended um, um, off of uh, offers and uh, things of that nature. So. Um, a tip is remove your emotions, um, sit down, take a day or two, sleep on it, and then come fresh 
with uh, your decision uh, based on uh, pros, cons, and most important, always have some legal counsel uh, uh, giving you their take as well. It's 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 crazy when you you said that you know because um you and I were going back and forth on the you know I have to always try to tell it in some sort of story form like so folks can really understand that we're not we're not we're not just giving you the information we're going through it in real time just as well you know what I mean that there's things that are going on in the background going in real time and you know we got the situation and then we looked at it and you know um you know we were going back and forth you know you, we we were a little um we were we were a little bit um. Real hot, <laughs> real hot, because it just, you know, and and you know, to 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 um, to be fair, right? Like you said, like to be fair, you know, the attorneys are just sending what they're sending, right? They they're not, you know, they're not they're not really overly concerned about you know who you are and what you've done. It's just, you know, their their job is to try to see how they can get. The, the deal done for um, a minimum price, right? It's business, like we say, right? It's business, right? Like, you know, if it, if it was our attorney, we would say the same thing. If we got a project, hey, how, how, you know, what, what can we get it done at, right? Without um ins- without insulting the, the other body, right? But now, I think that's a little, that's, that's the difference between us and other folks. Because we have right? a creative, we have a creative background. Right. So, so we would take that into consideration, but folks who are just really just trying to push these papers through, they're not really concerned with it, right? It might be just a blanket situation, and um, you know, and you you can't get too personal about it. You know, you and I talked about the situation. We we went through the pros and the cons. We said, hey, this may may not benefit us. Um, you know what? We 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 may decide to decline it and you know keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? And um, sometimes you'd be surprised, like when you do take that position. Right of saying, hey, I don't want it to. I don't, you know, we're good on it. You know, respectfully, we're good on that. Of course, you never want to burn any bridges. You always say, hey, respectfully, you know, it doesn't it doesn't quite meet the standards that we want to meet, and you know, we're going to decline on that. Sometimes people come back and say, hey, well, tell us what you do want. All right now, we can now 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 you you set the tone that you you're willing to walk away from it, and and then you know now folks sometimes we you know come back to the table and they have a little bit more. Um, um, they have some more things that they can put on the table for you to make sure that you can move the deal forward. Um, but, but at the end of the day, you can't be afraid to walk away from it. Like you just can't like, you, cause just because it's a deal doesn't mean it's a good deal. It doesn't mean it's going to benefit you. And in this business, what you have to always, con- always be concerned about in the back of your head is that what if this record pops off? If it pops off, it, it, if it pops off, these things can change your life. The question is, you know, are you contractually set up to be um, to capitalize off of it, right? Because you could be contractually screwed, and you you don't get anything, and you know you can be sitting here saying, "My God, you know this record sold millions of copies or got tens of millions of streams, billions of streams." Because you know that's what we're dealing with now. We're talking about billions of streams. Um, you just can't. You, you can't. You, can't take things too lightly you know some things you have to you have to make sure that you're not only looking at what's happening today but you have to look at what may be happening 10 years from now you know so that's definitely one of those things so if we had to give folks three tips when it comes to um you know negotiating your deal and uh negotiating your producer deal let's say let's say for producers if it's if it's for producers, if we say let's say the top five things that producers should be looking for, um, you know, when they're negotiating their uh, their their producer deals, like what are the top five things that you think are important, and then I'll give you the things that I'm think is important, and we we'll go from there. Top five. First of all, uh, I think um, in some cases for some producers, because um, this could move around. Uh, some would require a, a, an advance um, that you know for their for their service. You know, you do you do something, you want to get paid for it. You know, uh, you hand over a master, you handle with something tangible. You expect something tangible back. So, uh, for most producers, they would want to be given a, a respectable fee that they can use to whether you know upgrade their situation or just to live. You know, um, 
that immediate satisfaction is helpful for a lot of uh, producers because you just never know when you're going to get anything from uh, the record. You know, it could be a long time, so it's helpful. So that's one thing to consider is the fee. Um, for some producers, that's not a major thing. You know, if you already set up, you already got your thing going, that may not be the the the, the major thing, the deal breaker. Um, two, I would say, is probably one of the most important, if if not the most important, is credit. <laughs> you you, you want to make sure you're, you're credited properly. You know, this is how people know it's your work. This is what's going to help garner more work, more attention. This is going to allow you to uh, get in the media, the deals, get you in different spaces, allows you to talk that talk, and allows you to, to, to move around and open doors. So your credit uh, is very important. Now, I'm going to break it down furthermore, um, not just uh, credit as a producer, but your, your writer's credit is important in order for you to get paid, um, as well as uh, what we're doing now is we're, we're adding on feature credits. You know, we're not, as a producer, you're also an artist. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get into that. Because so that that's I think that may have to be a topic in itself. Yeah, because that's 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 something that I don't think a lot of producers are up on. I think some of your more um, large artists um, that always had, that, you know, producers that had record deals were ones that did that. So well, we're going we're gonna to jump into that. So you were talking about the advance. You said basically the credit. What's the, what's the third thing that you look out for? The third thing to look out for is this. Um, I would say uh, there's certain terms in the agreement that are like uh, points. Um, now, you know, it's been three points for a very long time, for over 20 years. Things about time for that to come up. So I would suggest, you know, four or five, as much as you can, you can get as far as uh, your points. You know, um, the 3%. I would, I would, I would uh, move away from that, and I think as a, as a, as a whole, as a, as a uh, community of producers, we all have to agree on that to to move forward from that standard old three points um, that they used to give when they were doing retail, um, when we were making records and it's being sold on retail stores. Um, let's see the other two. Um, I would say if you could get. Ownership of the masters or partial ownership, I think that's very important in these days. You know, to um, you want some like Joe say skin in the game, that will definitely give you some skin in the game. A percentage of, of the master recording, if you could get it all, that'd be great. You know, but um, if you're doing with a, a major record la label, they're going to most likely uh, want to hold on to the, the master. But you can try at least negotiate like a percentage so that you're able to. Uh, possibly use it on certain things, or um, whenever they want to use it, um, they gotta also gotta uh, contact you and you know come to some sort of um, legal agreement, uh, fees and things like that, so it could be uh, beneficial also for you in that area. Um, the fifth thing, um, get the pub, pub, yeah, yeah. <laughs> your, your publishing gotta be right on there. If, if if you don't got no no pub in this, this game is game over. <laughs> publishing, make sure you got your publishing. Um, I think that's pretty much self explanatory. Um, you know, make sure you have your publishing. Make sure you don't sign that off. That's that's going to uh, sustain you. That's your four hundred one k. That is something that you'll be able to hand down to your children. Um, you know, that's something that will continuously keep feeding you, um, especially when they do anniversary uh, albums and all these other things. It'll, it'll, it'll kick back up a notch. Versus um, all of these things. Like all, all that stuff leads to rediscovery of all the music. Right. So uh, publishing is, 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 is very crucial. Probably uh, number one in the top, the top, the top uh, three. I would say. 
So so I'm gonna recap it. Right? Yeah. So we're talking about the top. We're talking about the top five things that producers need to look for in their in their producer situation. Um, we, we, you said that you said the advance. Now the advance can vary based on where you are, right? Based on the fact of what you've had um, put out before, what what you got commercially released, um, the cal- the caliber of music, and also how bad does that artist want that song and their budget. And then, uh, so those those are the things that can that can change in advance um, up and down. But you want to make sure your advance is right. The second thing that we're looking at, we're looking at producer um, producer and songwriter credits, right? At this point, if you don't have producer songwriting credits, it's going to create a situation that you said again for you to get paid. That's going to be that's going to be the main thing. But the other thing is so that people could find you. Um, if you're not an artist that puts a tag on your music, um, people need to be able to look at the notes because now Spotify and some other um, folks are carrying the the, the the credits. You want to be able to be credited so that you can um, definitely you know be found in case somebody else wants some situations. Then we're talking about the deal points, um, but we didn't talk about escalations on the deal points. If it goes gold or platinum, it's supposed to be a little bit escalations on that. But um, like you said, the 3%, I think, is antiquated. Um, folks should be looking for more only because um, I think I think music has, has the potential to earn more um, in, in perpetuity than it ever has. I think before we might have been limited to physical copies, but now you're not limited to that anymore. People could find your music 10 years from now and it can become a hit. You know, it can go, somebody can find your song on TikTok and it becomes the next, you know, viral meme. Right. You know, so it, 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 it it's a situation where you want to make sure that you're locked into that. Um, many people may not be able to negotiate the owner situation uh, the, or the ownership of the master. So that was number four that we talked about. Right. Right. Um, the ownership of the master, if you can get a partial ownership, joint ownership, which is very hard to do these days. Um, a lot of a lot of um, the labels don't want to go through it because of the red tape. But the truth of the matter is, is that um, if if you're able to negotiate a portion of the ownership of the master, um, then we would always suggest to do that or put that language into your situation, because if you can do that, it it it. It um, gives you some more control, especially when you see what happens to like artists like De La Soul and these other guys who, who uh, whose music couldn't get on streaming platforms because they didn't have ownership of the masters. You know what I mean? And and they couldn't really come to the table and couldn't really negotiate the way that they should have, or they couldn't even be notified, or they couldn't even get a fair share because they didn't have the ownership in 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 the in, the, in their own music, right? So it's that was probably like very, very, very important. And if your attorney can negotiate that for you on your behalf, it'll put you way ahead of the, of the game. And then the, um, the, the last thing, but not the final thing, um, but probably the most important thing is the publishing. And that publishing would be like with the sound exchange and all of the other places to make sure that you're getting, um, you know, letters of direction, et cetera, make sure that you're getting the proper splits for, um, ASCAP, BMI or CSAC, um, because those things are are going to be like you said the four hundred one k your your retirement the money that you earn in perpetuity the money that you be able to um, you can actually leverage that earning income um, I don't think people really realize that you can actually if you earn enough in your publishing you can literally um, take loans against it and stuff like that and and you can leverage that in the future if you really understand you know how that game works. But those are the things that producers should be looking for um, in their deals. Um, so those are the five things that you should be looking for. Um, there are some more nuanced things to it that I think that you and I would need to just kind of dig into on a, um, on a, on another episode. But right. those are like those are like the major uh, five points. And you know, for producers um, who have a lot more skin in the game, you know, you'll be able to have a little bit more leverage. Um, but doubling back to what you said about the credit um, and and now that producers have the ability to release their own music through maybe DistroKid, TuneCore, whatever, um, <clears throat> it, it's, it's become more and more important for you to basically release your music as an artist. And 
it's become more and more important that when you can negotiate it to make sure that you're featured in the credit or um, it becomes, you know, that person plus you. Right. So let's say it's architect, architect beats and said artists or said artists and architect beats. And and the reason for that is um, it helps for one, it helps for your sound exchange collection. Let's be clear on that. Um, and then also it also helps with um, your catalog, getting, your catalog. Right. It helps with your catalog discovered your streaming. Like it helps everything. Um, so it, it's 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 one of those things where um, I, we, we're really encouraging producers to no longer just you know sit in the background. Like we think that is very important for you not to just sit in the background and not to just um, you know take the writer's credit and you know and, and have those credits that people have to dig for. You know if if you can get your 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 name on that on that. Um, you know, listed on the song itself, you know, as a featured artist, to me, that's the best thing. And it's free promotion. It's, it's, it's actually crucial in this era where, where it's about branding yourself and branding yourself is what is uh, creating opportunities and creating deals. Um, so it's important that, you know, as a producer, that your name is next to the artist that you're working with so that you can uh, use that spotlight you know, to, to, to facilitate different situations and, um, you know, attract more clientele. Um, also, like with streaming, if you notice when you start doing searches for uh, certain artists, your name will also uh, start to come up along with it because your name has been placed in certain, around certain artists. Um, so that would be helpful for a lot of discovery um, and a lot of name recognition, which is going to be helpful for uh, a lot of deals you're going to want to make. Definitely, like 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 the the branding portion of it is huge. Like sometimes we sometimes don't even think about the implications of what it's going to really take for you to um, for you to really get the, the the promotion that you're going to need and the branding that you're going to need and for every everything that you can get your name on is probably like super important in this day and age, like you're saying. Um, a question that someone was asking us um, in in uh, the switching gears really quick, they were asking us about um, whether or not you should take an advance from your label or your distributor, and um, I think that's the age old question. Like, you know, should you use your own money or should you use other people's money? And it's it's kind of a double edged sword. Like, there's benefits to both. There's benefits to utilizing other people's money in this benefits to using your own money um you know let's let's get into that a little bit um i've heard this argument a a few times um especially uh coming from the independent artist standpoint where if as an independent artist if you're already established and you already uh have your own thing going um there are artists that are saying you know what i'm using my own money i'm just coming for the to the deal just to use other resources that they can't get this way that when it's time for them to jump ship and get bigger deals, they're not attached. They're not in debt to the, to the label. They could just take, you know, take their masters and pretty much run. Um, I find that interesting because I know that in the business world in general, they always say, uh, use their money. Don't use your own money. Um, and we've had this conversation uh, before where, you know, you're really supposed to use your money to invest in other, other things. Um, you take their money to use for projects. Um, if you can leverage it to really focus it on things that need it, like the marketing, the promotion, um, that would be more ideal than just taking the cash and putting it in your pocket, you know. Um, but to take the money to actually work your project. You know, um, not necessarily using it for the recording aspect because the recording aspect could be pretty cheap if you, if you, you know, been in the game and have some resources that you can use. But apply any type of advances to the th- the big ticketed things, the marketing, the promotion, those things that's gonna uh, get you the attention. It's it's um, it's it's a. 
It's a double edged sword, man. Like it really is. It's like remember when you use their money, their money comes at a at a ridiculous kind of interest rate. Mm-hmm. Right. It's crazy. Like, yeah, so it's it's re- and it's not something that's like it's not your average loan, right? Because remember it's like you have to recoup it at a certain you know, at a certain percentage. And because they're now because now it's different because everything is so variable, right? Meaning like Spotify pays this, Apple Music pays that. So it's it's like, you know, what if you have success on the lowest playing, <laughs> the lowest paying kind of platform that, you know, it takes you longer to recoup the money, right? So it's just it's it's so it's it's such a such a different situation. Um I'm more of a fan of um a little bit of both. Right, which is you, you use some of their money, you use some of your own, and this this helps for you to kind of maintain a little level of control, right? Because now you're kind of like in partnership. Um, if you're a person that opts not to use their money, um, I, I'm sort of against that because you kind of want to use your money for um, you want to use your money to grow your money, so you want to put your money in places where you can grow your money. And not necessarily have to go in debt to make more money, mm-hmm. if you know what I'm if you know what I'm saying, um, because there are financial vehicles out there that you can put your money into, and it can instantly start to earn you some bread versus you taking your money, putting it into a debt instrument. Because really, the um, the music industry, but before you really hit, it's a debt instrument. You're gonna go into it. You're gonna go into a lot of debt. Um, trying to break a song or trying to break anything um, in the in the short term, and I don't think people really understand that. Listen, this is this is a a game of really leveraging debt, and over time, it becomes a an, an ROI. But you don't know how much time that is. You don't know how much you don't know how much money it's going to take. Each song each song is different. This song might have taken twenty thousand. Your song might take a hundred. You don't know. You don't know, right? Because it's all about timing. It's all about market situations. It's all about what's out. Um, a lot of factors. Know, a lot of factors, and it's just no. There's no blanket to it. If there was a blanket to it, then everybody would have successful artists, you know, on, on every single label all the time, you know, going round robin. But that's just not the case. So, um, I'm not really. I, I'm a. I, I think you. Sh- if you don't have the. If you don't have your own resources, then yes, you should lose the label's money. You may not have a choice. You may not have a choice. Right. Right. You know, um, if you do have your own resources, I would say, hey, you know, um, use a portion of their resources, use a portion of yours to help kind of give you some to keep you some control into it. Um, if you if you if you got if you got a, a, a if you got some money to lose. If you got some money to invest in your situation then, you know, you can be your own person and you can control your own destiny, as some folks would say. Um, just know that if you don't have the right team, just know that if you don't have the right infrastructure, you know, that tends to you leading, um, leaning to spend more money than you would like to. This is right. That way. Right. You know, Definitely. So, so there are pros and cons to whether you should use or shouldn't take the, I just think it's just all, it's all um, everybody's individual goals. You know how much debt you want to take on? Are you afraid of debt? Are you afraid of being, um, quote unquote, um, indebted to the, the record label, which is a sort of a slavery, as some people would say. <laughs> right? I, I'm, are you enslaved to the label because you own this money? It just depends. You know, you know, if you believe in what you're doing and you know that there's a way for you to make some money at the end of the tunnel. Then, so basically, yeah. it's a real light walk. You know, it, it, it you it really have to uh, take a little from this and a little from that if you can, and kind yeah. of yeah, yeah, because you have to look at it from the long haul, right? That you have to look at it from the long haul. You have to look at it in the stance that you may not make that money immediately, and then okay, if you've um, if if okay, if you've exhausted the label's budget, okay, now you have yours to go to, right? But I right. think also this 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 kind of um goes back to what we're talking about when it comes to negotiation you know you want to make sure that you can um foresee uh some of the challenges up ahead you know so those things you mean you, you want to think about 
when you're doing your negotiation, when it's when when things don't work out or debt money, whatever the case is, you know, other opportunities. You want to be able to be able to be able to move out of those situations without the red tape, without being tied down, without being locked in. Because there are people who can't get off a label no matter how hard they try. You know, they've they've used up the money and they're uh, pretty much benched. <laughs> you know, yeah, like and, and benched big time and really can't and can't move for years upon years upon years. And let me tell you something: they will hold you on that bench until your career prime. And, and that's it's, it's that gone. happens. That happens. You know, they will hold you, and you will have the hottest new music to release. The moment you try to release it, they will snatch that out if you try and release it. So um, you want to make sure, you know, that when you're negotiating these contracts also to think about uh, those things as well. Definitely. I, I, I look at this. I look at these things, man, and I, I say to myself and I go, there, there are just like. There, there, there's so many things inside this music industry that people have to really be careful of. And like you said, it's like, you know, it, if 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 you say, for example, like you're using somebody for a reference like a Dame Dash, she would say, hey, you got to use all your money. You don't use anybody else's money. You use your own. And, you know, that gives you autonomy. You can do what the fuck you want, right? <laughs> like if you use your own money, you can do what you want. You don't have to answer anybody. You release on your dime. You release when you want to release. You put it out when you want to put it out. All right. You know, that's that's the benefit of that. Um, if you take somebody else's money, then of course they're going to have a little say so in what happens because they want the ROI. Right. It's their money. It's their money. Right. Um, so it, it, there's, there's pros and cons to it. Um, everybody has to look at their individual situation and kind of get a, an idea of, you know, what the goals are and what you're trying to accomplish in the short term and long term. Um, I always put, put my, uh, I always go and defer to that. Like, what are your short and long term goals? It's very clear. It's very important for you to be clear on what those are. In order for you to make the right decisions in this game, um, we're not going to see you be perfect, but it's it's better for us to make um, to minimize the amount of mistakes we make on the way. Right, right. It'll, it'll right. help to get you get help to get you where you need to go a little bit faster. Um, and if you if you con- and if you're conscious of these situations when you're making these deals, you can have a better idea of how to position yourself. So if things go wrong, you know where you stand. Right, and then that that's definitely one of those things. Switching gears a little bit, man. Let's go back to our, um, you know, we had our last episode. We were talking about NFTs, non fungible, non fungible tokens. If you're not familiar with that, please check out our last podcast on NFTs in the music industry. Um, also, check out our website. We have some articles about NFTs and non fungible tokens and the implications of such. And we were talking about um, Mr. Tory Lanes and the, the the sale of his NFT. And then his, his NFT um, just went up for resale earlier this week. And I saw some crazy numbers. So let me get this straight. So let me let me break this down and get it straight. So you're able you were able to buy his NFTs for what a dollar, correct? That's right. One dollar. And according to him, you know, there's a few people who bought maybe 10, 20, you know, so you probably spend ten dollars, twenty dollars. So on this date, I don't, I don't remember the exact, the exact date. It was able to resell the twenty fourth. The twenty fourth was able to resell at what twenty four, twenty five, fifty thousand. Is that what you were saying? We saw as I saw as much as um listings for fifty thousand dollars. Wow. Now the question is, did those sell at fifty thousand dollars? I'm not sure, but some folks had the um, audacity <laughs> to put it for that amount of money. Now I've seen some other folks that were selling their copies for five, ten, twenty dollars. Even if they were selling it for five, ten, twenty, fifty dollars, whatever, that's still a win. You only bought it for a dollar, right? So the flip, so the flip is real. So the fans, the fans win. That's dope. Fa- you know, the fans win, and 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 um, just 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 a, a tidbit to them. You know, you have to add more utility to your NFT if you want it to sell at those prices. You know what I'm saying? 
Like I said, I think, I think, um, you know, right now, I think people may be looking at some of the, like the crypto punk and some of the other NFTs and looking at that space and thinking that that stuff kind of, um, that stuff translates to music immediately. And it's hard for it to translate to music only because, you know, um, the, a baseline value for music has already kind of been established for a long time. So it's it's going to be hard to break people out of the mind frame that, hey, I'm not, I shouldn't be paying this much for one song. I shouldn't be paying this much for an album. You know, Well, unless yeah. you bundle it, unless you bundle it with a whole lot of uh, incentives, you yes. know, some some free merch concert at your at your at your uh it, your it city has to, it has that, to have more utility you know some some uh meet and greets you know um uh, autograph stuff where the artist actually knows your name personally um th- there's a lot that can that, that they can they can go with this you know there's a lot that they could do to to pr- make sure that value is really uh worth it i think the other thing too is like you know um there should be no time frame on that access. Right. Definitely. Right. Meaning like if, if once you, once you get an NFT from me, you know, you're, you're always going to have said access or said, you know, or said discounts or said anything. Well, that's the only, that's the only way that's, that's the only way you're going to be able to, um, to, to resell it. Right. You know, because if once you resell it, the next person that buys it will take on all of those things. They'll get the the next uh, slew of merch that comes out. Uh, they'll get the 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 concert and the, the autographs and all of the other things that come with it. So it would have to be definitely an ongoing thing. And once once you can once you can kind of get that figured out, then it it becomes a, like you said a a earning tool, a perpetuity earning tool, and you can never. Um, discount is just going to go on and on and on, which is probably um, the the best thing about the NFT. And then also, he's locked in for a percentage. I think he's locked in for about twenty percent. Um, so, you know, kudos to him because you know he's, he's already sold a million copies out the gate. So you know, um, as has been reported, and then anything that happens on the resale market, he's going to be tied in again for another twenty percent again. Wow! So he's, a, so he's already made the million, and then. Whatever it's selling on the resale market, that's you know, dope. It's, because it's it could, it could, it, this could be like something that could be really for a lifetime. Like it could just keep reselling year after year after year, and you know, and he could still drop a uh, new material. You know, and if I was, and if I was him, I would drop new material, but I, I would uh, uh, minimize the quantity to make it even more. You know, yeah. charge two dollars. You know, maybe five hundred thousand charge two dollars, or maybe drop it down to okay, it's only going to be a hundred of these. It's only going to be a hundred. Hundred at a hundred. Hundred dollars. Hundred dollars. Hundred dollars. And you're going to get, and this you're going to get flown out. You know, to 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 uh, a private. A location at a beach somewhere where I'm doing the show just for my hundred, right. you know, stuff like that, like incentives like that, you know. So there's a lot of room to to, to grow with this. So much, so 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 much, man. So much in this digital space, man. It's if you, if you, if you're not um if you're not familiar, you know, it's going crazy and not for nothing. Like um uh, platforms like uh like Rebel, shout out to Rebel, we're part of that. Um, you know, they're they're you know, this is not financial advice by any stretch, but their their coin right now is just going crazy on the internet as far as far as cryptocurrency is concerned. Um I've I've watched it make some some serious gains in the last uh week to ten days. You know, so um as the as the NFT space starts to um grow um, I, I think at one point it was like, you know, in the teens. And now I think it's um, trading well over $30 now. Wow. You know? So at one point, I think it was anywhere between 14 and $15. And now it's trading over $30. Um, doubled. So 
it's it's definitely a space that's not going anywhere. It looks like it's going to continue to grow. Um, for artists and musicians and producers, if you're not part of this NFT space, if you're not understanding what's going on, you got to get yourself educated on it. Absolutely. All right, and and I, and I think we're going to cap off this this episode with uh with um you know folks have been asking us what's the best um digital audio workstation that we use to make our music on and it's funny because um you and I you and I tend to use different platforms right <laughs> it's like so it's like i have a machine i have the native instruments um i you know but i tend not to use it i tend to use fl studio um and then if you have something that you know needs to go into that then of course we'll bring it out but you know um you know let's talk about that um, I think it really just comes down to, I mean, there's so many uh, uh, pieces of software out there, um, down to the big names, down to, to the no names, that can all do, you know, similar things, if not the same exact thing. Um, it comes down to maybe a price point, it comes down to uh, what type of setup you have, you know, whether if you're... Windows based computer or, or Apple based computer, um, um, and whatever whatever you know your 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 flow is, because it really comes down to the workflow and which may be easier for you to work with. So it may require um, testing out a few things. Um, like Jug said, I use machine native instruments machine. I have Fruity Loops, um, and um, I'm just attached to to native instruments. It works for me. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, but for others, um, they may want to use something else. They may want to, uh, use, um, logic or they may want to use, um, um, Fruity Loops. They may want to use, um, what else is out there? Ableton. Ableton. Um, some are using Pro Tools. Some, um, so there's a, there's a lot that you can, you can, you can choose from. Um, it just comes down to what do you feel comfortable with. Um, so I would say just, you know, there, a lot of them have like trial demos um, that you can try out and, and see how they feel. Um, see if you like the, 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 the workflow. Um, make sure it's compatible with your system and whatever other VSTs or whatever else that you're using. Um, I think that's what it just comes down to. Other than that, it don't matter. The, as long as the end product, you're happy with the end product. That's that's the most that's that's the most important thing. It's funny, man, because it's like it, it it all boils down to like you said, like what you're comfortable with, right? This is the day and age where you're gonna have to churn out content. Mm-hmm. It's not a it's not a day and age where you you know you can kind of you know sit with a track for <clears throat> excuse me for x amount of days, x amount of weeks. You know it, it just it just isn't like that anymore. Right. Um, um, so the reality of the situation is that you should really be looking to find something that has the best workflow. Uh, works for you. You can get in and out as fast as you can and then get the best sound that you can get um, that's going to be able to compete in the marketplace. Um, I like FL Studio. Um, it just it just it just felt a little um, felt like I had more control mm-hmm. in doing it. Um, but I also like Ableton. Like I, I like Ableton a lot. Ableton had some some really 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 cool features um, that I that I liked from them, you know, um, for a while. And when I feel like jumping on the pads, and you know, then it's like, okay, I need to jump on the, the you know on the native instruments uh, on the machine, you know. And it, it just depends on what my mood is and what I feel like, you know, what I feel like doing, you know. And yeah, you know, I think that's the main thing. It's all about your vibe about how you how you're feeling creatively and what's going to keep you in that space to keep creating and pushing out the content that you like. Right. Right. I remember a key thing for us was transitioning from the hardware to 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 software. I think that was a very telling time, you know, sort of like the changing of the guards, you know, and it was <laughs> it was just kind of real interesting that you know, when technology made that jump uh it was pretty important um, to get the, get with the times. Um, so all of that to say is you want to also make sure that 
that your whatever you choose that is, is compatible and comparable with uh, what's out there so that you can be able to transfer uh, your sounds, be able to transfer your work if you ever need to go to the studio or if you ever need to work at another location or so forth. You want to be able to, to be able to move over, plug in, and have no issues. When it's time for you to track or to mix or master, you want to be able to do that easily, quickly. Um, and, you, and so it's very important that you have your stuff is compatible with what's, with what's out there, what the bigger studios are using. Yeah, I think that's I think that's the key too. Like you said, to kind of be in a plug and play kind of environment, right? Right. Where you, where you can just kind of plug your stuff up and get it going, and then also and making also making also also making sure that your your platform that you're using is evolving, right? right. And it and it is it is um, improving. Um, some platforms sometimes kind of plateau, right? And and, and don't and don't um and don't Give evolve. Updates. Yeah, don't evolve as quickly as the the, the technology evolves. Um, you know, as things change, producers need need more tools, and you definitely want to make sure that you're using a platform that's that's um, dedicated to innovation, and 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 making sure that those platforms um, continue to change and continue to evolve so that it can help the producers to create the best music and create the best workflow and also help you to save time. Um, that's to me right now. That's probably paramount. It's like how much time do we have to create this music and what's going to help me create it in the most, um, in the, the littlest time as possible. Absolutely. But folks, that's the architect beast music business podcast. Check us out. Check us out at www.architectbeats.com. Um, we're on all, uh, social media at architect beats. Um, Facebook, we're on architect beats online. Um, you know, check us out. If you like the content, uh, like share, subscribe, um, pass it on to a friend that's trying to make it into and make it into business. Um, on a, on a final note, we're still looking for artists. We're still looking for producers to join the team and to work and to work with. Um, you know, we, we have some things that are out there now that we're still looking for those folks. So if you know, an artist or you got somebody that's, uh, that you think it's dope, shoot us a message. If you have any DM. if you have any questions if um for for topics, shoot it through. Let us know, we'll go over it. Um you know, we hope that we could be could uh, provide some uh information that could be helpful to your career, you know, and kind of avoid some of the traps and scams that that's out there that's plaguing the music business right now. So um we hope that you know we can help you guys out, and um, so you could avoid these things. Till next time, y'all. Peace. Peace.